What's up guys, back out at the surf again. And today, I'm gonna use something that I haven't done for a long time, and for some reason, I don't see it used very often anymore. And what that is, is these little crappie grubs. Now, when I first started surf fishing, back when I was a kid, so long ago, this is basically the only thing that we threw. There wasn't any Lucky Crab, we didn't have camo or gulp sandworms. Um, we didn't even really throw sand crabs very much. This was pretty much the uh, tried and true perch slayer right here. A little paddle tail crappie grub. And there's different colors you can use. This one in particular is a pumpkin seed, one of my favorites. Um, and another, a lot of people like to use uh, motor oil red flake, which is like a dark greenish, brownish color. Kind of looks like a pile wormish type. There's a lot of different colors, a lot of different styles. They have these paddle tails, there's curly tails. But this is the one that I like. This is one of my favorites. So I'm gonna use it out here in the surf today. Let's see if we can catch some perch. So before we get out there, I'll show you my setup. It's kind of similar to my last video, for those of you who saw my last video. It's a Carolina rig, about a one ounce barrel sinker. And the nice thing about this setup is you can change this depending on the style of fishing, depending on how far you wanna throw it, the setup you're using with it. Uh, and just personal preference. So you can go anywhere from a half ounce, I think I've even used a quarter ounce. I don't know, if, you, if you're a long time scarber, I caught one, a surf perch, long time back um, on an ultralight setup with, I forget if it was a quarter ounce or half, I think it was a quarter ounce barrel sinker. So it really depends on the day, the conditions, and your preference. But anyways, I have a one ounce today with a little bead there to stop the sinker from riding up on the knot there on my swivel. So there's a barrel swivel there, and then about a three foot leader to the business end. That's a size two octopus hook with a little pumpkin seed paddle tail crappie grub. One of the nice things about this setup is you can pretty much throw this with any style rod. I mean, I'm not a bass fisherman, but I assume you can probably throw this on a bass rod, even a finesse setup like spinning, or even bait casting for that matter. Um, trout setup, like I said, like I just said, I caught one a long time back on a ultralight setup, very similar to this. So this Carolina rig is very versatile, and if A, you're new to surf fishing, or B, you just don't do it very often, you don't necessarily have to go out and buy a specially designed surf rod for this application. So all I'm doing here is flipping it out, giving it a nice firm cast. You don't need to huck it way the heck out there, but give it a nice distance, good solid cast, and then kind of a, a steady retrieve with a few pops here and there. And you can change up the retrieve depending on the day the fish might be going after something a little different. You can try just slow and steady, just bringing it straight back in. Or, I don't know, I like to do this little popping motion because I feel like it mimics a, oh, there's a bite right, oh, missed it. It mimics a little shrimp, which is one of the forages that these fish have. And have you ever seen a shrimp when they swim through the water, they flick their tail and kind of dart through. It's not like a steady swimming action like a regular fish. So I feel like that mimics it a little bit better, but like I said, it all depends on the day sometimes. Oh, there's one right there. Right there, that feels like a little bit better one. Not a bad one, not a bad one. Right, it does, right on cue. Yeah, that's not too bad. A little bit bigger than our last one. The last one that we caught was a male. This one is a female. You can tell the difference between the males and females by this tail right here. You can see on this one, this is the female. It's, this is uniform all the way down. On the last one, the one that we caught was a male. Um, this part, part right here is like cloudy color, kind of opaque. So anyway, this guy's got a little scar there too. Another nice little perch. It's probably about eight or nine, maybe 10 inches. They definitely get a lot bigger, but it's a good start. We'll get this one back. There's, oh, next cast. 
Another thing about Surf Bridge is they're schooling fish. So a lot of times where you find one, especially the smaller ones like, like we're catching today, where you find one, there's, def there's usually a lot more. So I'm sure if I plugged away at this little hole here, I can catch a few more. There's one. On the grab. Nice steady retrieve. This guy came up and picked it up. Not a huge one, but it is a fish. All right. Not a bad little specimen there. So for those of you maybe not familiar with surf fishing here on the West Coast, this right here is a barred surf perch. Uh, we have a few different kinds, all live in the surf here. But this one, you can tell it's got the yellow bars down the side here. That's not a giant, but that's a nice looking fish. He'll be a future two pounder. So we'll get this guy back. Right back out into the waves. Well, I wish I had a drone to show you guys, but you'll just have to take my word for it. The hole that I'm working here. And for any of you who are new to surf fishing, you're generally trying to look for deeper pockets um, where these fish tend to hold at. If you weren't familiar with it, you might think this beach is all the same. It just kind of goes off at a gradual uh, decline off into the depths. But actually, there's different pockets where there's, where there's deeper areas, and then there's different places where there's like shallower areas called sandbars. So this spot that I'm fishing right here is a deep pocket, like a trench that goes out into deeper water. And on that side over there, there's a sandbar. And on that side, there's a sandbar. And then this kind of pocket goes, it kind of it's like an L shape. It goes in and then goes along the beach a little bit. So my thinking is that the fish will come in at the top of the L and then just feed along the bottom right there where the waves are pushing up and kicking up all the sand and uh, feeding those fish, the sand crabs, their natural forage around here. And I think that's what has these fish kind of schooled up in here. Well, I've been able to get a few with this uh, grub here. So that's another benefit of this setup right here is it's super mobile. It's not like a, a bait and wait thing where you just sit, put it out there and you're sitting in one spot. This is like a cast and retrieve. You can cast here a few times. If there's no luck, move down the beach a couple hundred yards and just keep going so on and so forth until you find a little school of them. Um, and then once you find the school, you can just hammer away at that little spot. But it definitely pays to be mobile when you're fishing the surf. Not to say that baiting and waiting you can't catch fish, but if you don't fish the beach very often or you just, you're out looking for a new school of fish, this kind of strategy I feel like is a lot more effective than that's baiting and waiting because you can cover a lot more water a lot faster this way. All right guys, that's gonna wrap it up for me here. Not a bad day out here. I was only out here for about an hour and I was able to put a few fish on, on the sand, so not a bad day. I will leave these grubs linked in the description below. I think it's a really underrated method. I mean, like I said in the beginning, this, when I first started surf fishing, this is the only thing that I used to throw. We didn't even really throw sand crabs very much, which is kind of interesting, but anyway, it's an effective method and I don't see it used very often nowadays. So if you want to try it out, or if you're new to fishing, new to surf fishing, and you want to use some of your trout gear or some of your less ideal surf gear, I think this is a good alternative to the Lucky Craft or whatever, sand crab. I think this is a good alternative. So I'll leave a link in the description below if you want to check it out. But other than that, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below, and we'll see you next time.